Good morning, church. Good morning. Brother Williams' scripture reading is taken from John, the 14th chapter. Yes. Beginning at verses 6 mm -hmm. and terminating in verses 14. Uh, verses 11, I'm sorry. Beginning at verses 1, if you have your Bibles with us, let's read. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Now where did I go, you know the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know thou know not where thou go. How can we know the way? Right. Jesus said unto him, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. If you have known me, you would have known my father also. And from henceforth you know that you know him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it was a suffice us. Jesus said unto him, I've been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Mm. And he has seen me, has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. And he does the word. Mm. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading and the hearing and doing of the word. I will feed you. Want you to remind you this evening that we're going to be working on the cycle of addiction. And as we studied on last week, we will study uh, again too. We'll look at the process of addiction. And then we'll look at when we are addicted, the pain that develops in our lives. And we will study together to find out how do I escape the pain. When things are not working at home, the job is tedious at best. How do I escape the agony, the pain? So bring your friend, bring your neighbor. As we look at that subject this evening. But this morning, I want to talk to you about the one way. <clears throat> Without signs, we find ourselves on collision with injury and death. We arrive at an airport, we rent a car, we follow the unfamiliar exit sign that, that, that directs us out of the terminal onto the local highway. We come to a two-way exit at a stop sign. 
to the left there is the highway. To the right, it leads back into the terminal. There's also a big sign pointing left, and it says one way. Think of all the directions that we encounter. A one-way stop sign warning us, do not enter. We have medications that warn us to take it at a certain time during the day or to take it with food. All these warnings are presented for our safety and for our security. Think of the moment of a world that has not God. It's a world that's filled with warning signs. And those signs are designed to prevent us or prevent us from suffering. There are seven warning signs that should get our attention in life. Now, time will not allow me to go over all seven signs. So we are going to briefly cover three essential signs in life. If we are going to make it to the promised land. The scripture says, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes or goes to the Father except by me. And unless we follow the sign printed in the Word of God, then heaven indeed cannot be our home. I want you to know that the first warning sign in life that if we are going to make heaven our home, we have to watch our mouths. Amen. James says in James the first chapter and verses 19 and 20. James says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, quick to hear, and slow to speak. We have to be careful of speaking too quickly as we have observed something. Because sometimes things are not what they seem. I recall I was traveling and I stopped in a town. And I decided to get a bite to eat. And then her sister showed up that I knew. And she went over and sat at a table. And I'm getting ready to speak, to acknowledge my presence. 
But I waited a moment because the person at the table wasn't anybody that I recognized. I knew she was married, but that wasn't a husband. And I got to thinking, should I get up and say something? Should I get up and inquire? I decided that I wouldn't inquire. I decided on this occasion that I'm going to mind my own business and leave her business alone because after all, it could have been just a friend. It could even be been her brother, her cousin, some co-worker she's associated with. So before you speak, sometimes you got to watch what you say. Amen. Speech can be our worst enemy sometimes. Because speech is the gateway to our brain. And it communicates to us what's in our brain. And we have to understand that none of us can make a claim that we never say or do anything that we don't later on regret. Our mouth exposes the true ground and about us. It exposes our impatience. It exposes our contempt for people and things that cause us to be impatient and sometimes to prejudge. You know, prejudice means that we prejudge a situation. It means that we prejudge a person. We prejudge a thing. So we have to be careful what we speak, what we say, because our prejudices without the facts can lead to ruining a person's life yeah. and hurting our own souls as we reflect upon trying to make heaven my own. I recall on one occasion and uh, there was a brother and there was a person that I didn't know. But I really knew the brother. Now he was a friend, a close friend in the gospel. And I had known him for years. I had seen his bad time, his good time, his ups and his down. He was walking one day. And he was walking with someone that I didn't recognize. I knew a little about his family because when you're friends, you're close. And I looked at this woman and she didn't look like a family member. And I decided that I'm going 
to yes, speak to my brother, let him know my brother. Then I got to thinking, the only reason you want to speak is because you want to be noticed. So I shut my mouth and I said to myself, Lord, I trust him. So I'm not worried about her. And I went on with my life. It would have been embarrassing to imply or to accuse my brother of doing something contrary to the gospel of Christ. Numbers 32 and 23 says, but if ye will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and your sins will find you out. What that basically means is, there was the one way to live for the Lord is, that if I lie, I don't have to worry about you. Because the Bible says my sin is going to find me out. If I'm traveling with someone that I shouldn't be traveling with, or I'm talking with someone that I shouldn't be talking with, my sin is going to find me out. If I cheat on a test in school, my sins are going to find me out. If I cheat on my beloved, my sins are going to find me out. You know, I've got to get a point in life. Got a little older, got a few gray hairs here and there. That the stuff we run after and the stuff we lie about, it, it really isn't running it really isn't work running out and lying about it. Because you get in more trouble lying about it than you do if you told the truth about it. Amen. I'm talking about the way, the truth, and the life. And that none of us comes unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. I want you to know that if something is offensive and is painful beyond the ability to bear, you have to realize that Jesus is needed. He's present, he's alive, he has all power and might and authority in his hand. If Jesus can't fix it, it ain't worth fixing. Amen. Trust Jesus and he will work it out. The mouth is a dangerous zone. God warns us to bridle our tongue. And to bridle means to control our tongue. Amen. Amen. And the question is, are you bridling your tongue? Are you controlling your mouth? The bridle on a horse. Control that horse movement. It tells me when to turn left. And it tells them when to turn right. right. It tells them when to gallop and when to slow down. Yeah. And what the text is saying about your tongue and my tongue, your mouth and my mouth, right. that we have to learn how to control it. Yes. You know, the Bible says, but the tongue yes. no man can take. Yes. And I also wondered what that meant. Yeah, right, yeah. That no man can tame the tongue. Yeah. Because I found out that a few things I 
can contain. Just some things I can't contain or control. And I searched the scriptures a little more. And I came up with the idea that to control the tongue in its proper context means that none of us can completely and absolutely control our tongue. Amen. We can control a little of what we say and think, but we can't control all that we say or think. Amen. Just give a person a little time to talk. And somebody says they will hang themselves. We have understand, my friend, that God's word is powerful. If we read it, if we understand it, God will bring a blessing in our life. So we have to control our tongue. But we also have to watch the things we worry about. Right. If we're going to make heaven our home. And again, the Bible teaches us not to worry. And I get your text in a few moments. But what the text means is, don't worry about everything. Some things you're going to worry about. That's going to be on your mind. But you don't have to worry about everything. And especially worrying about things you cannot control is foolish and stupid. Because what I can't control, I need to learn how not to worry about it, but give it into the hands of the Lord. Amen. I can't determine whether or not uh, tomorrow's going to, but I can trust God who controls time, who controls space, and who controls the weather. Amen. God can work it out to it be a day that I'm pleased with, that I'm happy with, that I'm able to carry out some kind of activity outside that I plan. And so when you have something that you want to do. But you're afraid you might not be able to do because the boss might say no or the weather may not work with you. Don't worry about the boss. Don't worry about the weather. Trust God. Amen. Talk to God. Yeah. And God has the power uh, to work it out for you. Amen. Whereby that you get the day off and the day is right. Amen. You and I have had situations whereby that we need to go somewhere. We work. But we know the boss has already met two or three all already on that day. But it's important, it's an emergency to us that we be able to be off that day to, to participate in whatever this activity is that we plan to participate. You trust God. You believe in God. You obey God. And watch God work it out. Amen. Don't be concerned too much about your worry. You know, the average person spends one hour daily. Amen. Uh, when it comes down to worry. When it comes down to whether or not I'm going to be able to make it. There's nothing wrong with planning for health crisis. Amen. Some of us don't plan for health crisis. That is getting sick and going to the hospital. But you know what? <clears throat> if you trust God, if you believe in God, you will start making plans. Because many times God delivers us through the plan that we make. Amen. 
get six and five, and you get Medicare, is that a blessing? Isn't that a plan? Because some folks were taken to the hospital. Amen. Let y'all in a few days. When you don't have any health insurance. But if you got some, they keep you for a while. To make sure that everything is alright. And working to your benefit. Amen. Whoever carries with it the idea. Don't worry too much. You know what when it says worry, or we think about worry, in Philippians 4 and 6, the text says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Yeah. When the text says, be careful, it means don't have a sense of false word. You know what it means? When it says, be careful, it means stop biting your fingernails. Right. Stop scratching or cutting your flesh. Because whatever is worrying you is not worth worrying because God has it under control Amen. and he will bless you and he will see you through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of us owe some rent. Yeah. And we wonder where it's coming from. Don't worry about it. Do what you can when you can and talk to God and God will work it out. Some of us are concerned about whether or not our marriages are going to last, whether or not our children are going to finally get the message and behave. If you trust and you follow God, God is going to work it out. Psalm right. so 1, the wonder come up and request a prayer. She didn't seem to be worried to me. Maybe she was. But Lawanda has a record with the Lord. Amen. She asks. She requests. Yeah. And God delivers. Amen. The only thing Lawanda has to do is wait on the blessing. Amen. Amen. I'm sure that before Tony got married. He looked, he saw, and he requested, and waited on the Lord. And the Lord said, since you ask, she's yours. I think about Brother Hodge. He asked, he prayed, yeah. and God gave. The word supplication in the scripture when it's connected with prayer. Prayer came for the idea to ask, yeah. and to ask with hope, or to be in a ray. But the idea of supplication means that you continue to ask, you continue to beg until God gives you what you requested. Amen. And some of us don't have what we have requested or desired because we are afraid about it, but we have not been in supplication about it. Amen. In 1 Timothy 2, and the verse is number one. The Bible says, I exalt therefore that first of all, Supplication, prayer, and intercession, and the giving of thanks be made for all men. What is intercession? Intercession is when I pray for you. Intercession is when you pray for me. 
Therefore, I'm not constantly praying for you, looking out for your benefit. How can I think that God's going to look out for me and bless me? Sometimes we do a whole lot of asking, but we don't do any intercession for others who need God, his blessing, his help, his strength in their life. And the question is, do you have God? His help, his strength, amen, in your own life. You know, when you have faith in God, you say, I'm not going to worry. God got this. I've already talked to God. I've already given to God. God got this. And I've seen people's lives drastically change because they believe that God got this. Yes, people marriages that was on notice from termination when they uh, made an obsession. I want you to know that God blessed them. And as we say, God had that. People who have bills to pay, but are not enough money to pay their bills. You talk to God, you have intercession, and you learn quickly that God got this. Looking at your children who are in a state of emergency health. Doctors say they can't do it anymore. But when you take it to the Lord, when others make intercessions for you, you will come out to learn that God got this. Right. When God is the one who owns cattle on a thousand heaps, we can trust him, we can believe in him to take care of us when we make requests with earnest desire. Because we know that God, God got this. In the words of Dr. King, recorded the night before he died. He said, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that name. I just want to do God's will. And he allowed me to go up to the mountain. I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I'm, I'm, I, I may not get there with you, but I'm happy. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Because my trust, my hope, my testimony is in God. Whatever you desire for your life, whatever you desire for your children's life, you got to learn to pray, to have intercessions, but also have supplication to God. And that God will hear you, he will bless you, he'll work it out. Freedom cost you in the bank. There was something that I wanted to do for my family before I died. And it was necessary that I go through people to achieve this. And when I really thought about it, I knew it was what I wanted and what I desired. But I really didn't know whether or not the people would grant me, especially while I'm still alive and kicking. Now you died might do anything. Yeah, right. But when you are alive and kicking, yeah. sometimes they slump. Yeah. And so I went to God in prayer. Right. 
talk to God about the matter and about why I wanted it to occur. Then I went to the people, talked to the people about it, shocked me, but I don't know why I prayed about it. The people said, all right, it's done. Got a child that you don't even belong once you die. You trust God that God will bless you, that God will help you, that God will help you to make it in life. And those children that you care for in life, once you're gone, you can't do anything for them on in life. But if you talk to God, pray to God, and talk to God, God will work it out. Amen. Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, and the verse is number 1. I exalt therefore that first of all, supplication, a little begging goes on. Prayer, a little asking goes on. Intercession, a little pleading goes on. And the giving of thanks be made for all men. Got a problem? Amen. Been working on you? Tell it to the Lord. Leave it there. Believe by faith that Jesus will work it out. And he will work it out. Amen. For you good. So I'm telling you, go ahead and get your will. Go ahead and write your last testimony. And then trust God. Believe in God. That God is going to work it out. The Bible says don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow. Live one day at a time. Matthew 6 says, fret, that is, fear not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The idea of, of worry is not to fear. It's not to become agitated. Uh, it is not to become worked up about. It, but to be in calmness, to be in peace, and allow God to work it out. Amen. How do we stay strong in the Lord and have power in his might? Stay in prayer. Amen. With the Lord. Amen. The key to our strength is prayer with the Lord Amen. and trusting God through faith that God is going to work it out. The Bible says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the winds and tossed. When you look at the sea, when you look at the rivers, trust God and allow God to work it out. No, you can't get back that husband that right on your own, but you take the God in prayer, in faith, God will work it out. Yes, you can't get that car, that new home on your own, but trust God and God will work it out. Amen. You can't get that new, uh, amen, wife on your own, but trust God and God will work it out. Amen. You can't pay for uh, that home by yourself. You need help from God. Pray to God, trust God, and allow God, amen, to work it out. Amen. I want to say this morning, watch your anger. Watch your money. Watch your pride. Watch your worry. Watch your fears. And watch your doubts. But never take your eyes of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only one, Amen. the only way Amen. that we can make heaven our home. Amen. He leads us and we follow him. Amen. When we feel angry, he comes us. 
When we feel proud, he humbles us. When we worry, he soothes and comforts us. And when we are afraid, he quiets and calms us. Amen. We have to trust in the Lord and not trust in the power of our mind. When I'm broke, he blesses me. When I'm doubtful, he refreshes me. I want you to know that the Lord, the Lord, has spoken this morning. And it's time for you to make up your mind that you're going to obey the Lord. When the Lord speaks, our response is to hear, to believe, and to obey. And God will bless our lives. Amen. And many times that we're not blessed in life, because we got Jesus in the Word, we talk about Jesus. But we have never obeyed His Word. Amen. Once you obey His Word, become a child of God, believe that He is the Son of God, repent of every known sin, confess Christ to be the Lord of your life, and then be baptized in water, not to take a bath, but to have your sin washed away. Yeah. And then the Lord Himself, will add you, he will place you into his church. Right. One of the ways you know you're in the right church, you didn't join it. Right. The Lord adds you to it. Yeah. Something you join is something that you can unjoin. Right. But in the Lord's body, in the Lord's church, we'll add it to the church. Yeah. Won't you come as we together stand and sing?